road hunting, uh, which is running up and down the roads, shooting out the wind at deer, was a huge problem. The people are driving down the roads, they, number one, they don't have permission, they're shooting out of the vehicles, they're shooting from the roads, they don't know what's out there. Enforcement of that is very, very difficult because you gotta have three things. You gotta have the game warden there, you gotta have the deer there, and you gotta have the bad guy there, all at the exact same time. But you can see the chances of that happening naturally are slim and none. You know, I would drive along and see some deer in a field and, and I would try to find a place to hide my truck and get set up where I could watch the deer and hopefully they would still be there when somebody came by and that was really, really hard to get done. Here we are frustrated because we know what's going on and we cannot get a handle on it because you can't get those three elements, the vehicle hunter, the deer, and you, the game warden, all at the same place at the same time and be where you can watch it happen. The guys that are driving by going for the hamburger or going to watch the ball game, they never see the deer. It's set too good. They never see it. They're, they're going too fast to see it. It's the guys coming by at 20 miles an hour with their windows down, and that's exactly what they're doing. They are looking. It's on their mind. It's not like we put up a great big sign that said, slow down, deer ahead. I think any game warden that's, that's proud to be a game warden, that really in his heart believes what he does is important, was excited to have a tool that would make such a huge difference. And did it make a huge difference? It still is. Uh, we'll never stop road hunting. You're never gonna stop crime. That's just the way things are. But it was rampant when we started. And so many quality deer were getting shot that way. The decoy deer program was initiated in 1987 by Larry Mannering and myself. We're, we're sitting around, we're, we're frustrated. We're talking amongst ourselves and uh, Joe Carter worked at West Osage. Doug Frazier was, was stationed at Skytook. John Lowry was our lieutenant. And Dave Strang was at Bartlesville. Fred was at Noata. And we're all facing the very same dilemma. I'd been working for five years in Craig County and I couldn't see that I was making any difference in the in the amount of road hunting. How do we stop this road hunting that's just killing us? And the landowners are, dis are disappointed that we can't get a handle on it because we're trying. The decoy, what it did, it, I could get out before daylight, set the decoy up and get my truck hid and have a catch truck if they decided to run, if they didn't stop. It put everybody in the same spot at the same time. It, you know, at first there was, say, well, this is entrapment. Entrapment was something we, we heard. Mostly it was, we heard it from people other than the hunters that you talked to in the field or even the road hunters. They never said entrapment. They knew exactly what they were doing. Entrapment is where you're soliciting. Uh, somebody to do something and all we were really doing was giving a poacher an opportunity. Your good hunters weren't going to shoot it anyway and uh, we, we would try to set it up to where the average person driving down the road wouldn't see it. The average, even the average hunter wouldn't see it. It was hid really back in the woods but somebody that was driving along looking for deer trying to find something to shoot, we, uh, that's who we wanted to see it. Hey guys, we got a vehicle northbound. It's a Chevy Extended Cab. Z71 northbound, stand by. Okay, vehicle's got uh, two occupants, both in camouflage. Yeah, man, I hope we get a big one. There you should be a big one around here, I heard about it. Yeah, I was down here the other day, scoping out and selling. Yeah. 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 Hey, hey. 
There he is. I see. There he is. Get your gun. Okay, Shoot him. Stop. I got Shoot him. him. If you could get a deer to look like a real deer in the wild, there was no question. It was we and we knew this. It was going to get shot. There he is. There he is. Shoot him. Shoot him. Okay, we got a shooter. We got a shooter. Take aim, Warden. Stop. Put your hands on the front windshield Stay now. Warden. Front windshield. Stay right where you're at. Okay, get out and put your hands on the tailgate. Okay, we were seeing a, uh, a growing problem with the road hunting. We had a lot of complaints. You'd hear it from landowners, you'd hear it from legal hunters that were tired of people uh, driving by and shooting a the deer they may have been scheming on the whole dead gum fall waiting for gun season and then just from people honest folks they weren't even hunters that were just driving the roads and seeing it go down it wasn't something we could just say well let's build a decoy and go do it we had to go through the through the director and get his approval to, to initiate the program from there we went to uh, the wildlife commission and and uh, went into a commission meeting and and got their grace and then we took i had to look at the our our laws, our state statutes. So we went and had the Attorney General look at our, our regulations and laws that we already had, and that was approved. And from there, we started the program. I got Nick Woodard uh, involved because Nick was a taxidermist and also a game warden. So we had him do a full mount of a, of a, of a small deer. I'm not sure who funded the one that Nick mounted that John brought to the Osage, but that was the first initial setup of an actual decoy deer in muzzleloader season. And they knew I had a video camera, so they got me involved. And we'd go out and set up and, and uh, wait for the bad guys. Now the problem with it is, is you gotta have three things. You gotta have the game warden, you gotta have the deer, and you gotta have the bad guy, and you gotta have them all at the same place at the exact same time. So when we set it up the first time, and we're videoing it, because we already had a little resistance from headquarters because of the image it might look like, then we knew we needed to slam dunker. So that, so that part was gut-wrenching. Where do we need to set this up? When do we need to set it up? Who do we need there to make sure it's gonna be right? Do we need to video it or not? And, and we decided we did. And so those were the gut-wrenchers. Were we gonna be in the right spot? And then you get all this work, all these people, and is there anybody going to come by? Because <laughs> you know they really are. But you know, you've got so much time and energy invested and you've worked so hard with your DA and your judge, you're telling them what's going to happen, what we're going to do. You've got to have a payoff. So you, the first time with the real decoy, the one John was running the video on, yeah, it was, it was like, ooh. We knew they would shoot if we had people come by to see it. Because we knew the problem. But did we get the right spot? Oh, yes, we did. Sunday, November the 1st, 1987, at 8.55 a.m. Had a red El Camino just go by, apply the brakes, and pass on by. Eleven twenty-five. Shot fired. 
but it was in the Osage County where it really started and took off right there. And Keith was right behind us getting the decoy made. I went to the bow club in uh, Craig County and told them what we were doing and, and they donated enough, enough money to mount the very first deer. It wasn't mechanical. It was just a mounted deer with a real hide. Uh, you couldn't, it looked really good. And we used that the first muzzleloader season. Are you still shooting? If you've seen some of the videos, sometimes people shoot and shoot and shoot and shoot, wondering why that deer doesn't go down. Obviously, they haven't shot up many deer because they'd be taken off. 11:23, we got a red and white Ford pickup coming. They're looking. Uh, the DA in Osage County said, uh, "Yeah, you bet you. I'll take all those you can bring me." He said, particularly if you got them for the film, he said, how are they going to argue this deal? One shot fired. By the passenger, the driver's getting out. You can imagine your dismay if you spent half the day setting up in your tree stand and just as the big, as, as your buck's walking out and you're getting ready to shoot him, some guy comes to a screeching halt and shoots the buck off the road. You're going to be a little unhappy with that guy. Uh, he shot. He did. I think he did, but he shot. He's backing up. So for a while, people just shot it because here's a deer, quick, slide the brakes, back up, out the window, bam, that's how fast it was. Night was a problem too because a lot of this happens at night, but you have an, a, an added problem. How do you get their attention focused on your decoy at night? So we come up with all kinds of deals. We had uh, mine, a uh, contribution to this whole thing was a little deal I called Action Eyes. flip it up and we had these reflective, you know, pieces of reflective tape on it and you'd flip it up and then leave it up for just a little while and then flip it down and just off beside those would be where your, uh, your decoy deer was. And you'd set it up on a long straightaway and you'd give them the eyes at 300 yards. Then you'd shut it off. Then you'd give it to them again, then you'd shut it off. His dad, there he is. I see him here. Hand me the gun. He's 
slowed down like he saw it, but he went on. Did he see it? Yeah, I think he saw it. He stopped, pumped his brakes a couple times, but he went on. The evolution had to happen because people weren't, were quitting to shoot. They just they were looking at it. They're getting more sophisticated also. They sitting around the beer joints of their coffee shops going, hey, I, you know, Bill was down on, on the so-and-so ranch the other day and he shot this deer and it was a decoy and the game wardens got him. And so they start doing all kinds of things like honk the horn, slap the door. Or they're taking these little air horns and beeping at them. Ooh, deer, just like that, those kind of things. I mean, they're on it. They're ready, the I mean, they're on the trigger. Safety's off, no move. And if the deer doesn't show some sign of movement, they don't shoot. So, thus the evolution started. It went from being static, just the amount of deer, to being, to being mobile and, and to being where it could move. You had the tail moving on it, the head moving on it. Why won't you just play nice? And, and have all that robotics, it took a lot of money. To make a mechanical decoy was, is really pretty tough. We can go buy them right now. There wasn't anybody building anything mechanical uh, back when we started the decoy and, or, or a few years into it. You know, that stuff was not cheap. And you had to have the big stuff turn ahead and stop. And, you know, it took a lot of money. You cannot believe how many landowners funded a decoy being made. So they knew there was one for that area. I would say 50% or more was purchased by landowners that were sick and tired of the roadmaps. And they knew they could get something done if there was a decoy working. Why don't you just play guys? You gotta think of all the deer you're just saving because as this progress, guys, like I say, they wouldn't shoot unless the deer was moving. We know that today, the public knows it's going on. Doesn't mean they're not gonna do it, they are. But it's also gonna mean that they're gonna hesitate. And in that hesitation, that deer may get away or they're gonna stop and look and say, it ain't worth it. It is, it's a great deterrent. It's, you know, it's just, it's just like the deterrent, you're driving down the road and, and you, you're looking at your, your speedometer and you're going over and you're thinking, well, I sure don't wanna pay that $100 fine and, and you slow down. It's a deterrent to some of these bad, bad uh, poachers to, to stop them, to get them stopped. And it has. It has done a, it has done a, a wonderful job in the amount of, of traffic that we have on the roads and the amount of deer that are shot from the roads. But you also know that this one program in itself has had more effect on the illegal deer kill than any other program ever, and probably ever to be, ever, then it's saying something. There's any game warden that knows how effective it will tell you. No tool we've ever used has had such an impact on one horrible, hard to get a handle on violation. And it's just pretty cool. He's back in that now. He's got a gun out the window. Hey!